Blender's NPR capabilities are getting a huge upgrade. Dylan Gu of Gu Engine and his team have been working closely with Blender to create a whole new suite of NPR tools and workflows. While this isn't an official release quite yet, there is an experimental prototype build that I've been playing with. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a stylized shader with these tools. Let's dive in. So I'm here in the experimental prototype build of Blender, and this is my file setup. The shaders that are on them are just a normal principle BSDF. But if I go in and I just connect one thing here, you'll see my NPR stylized shader setup. So how does this work? Well, if we go to a material, let's go to my character skin, for example, you're going to see my texture, a principled BSDF, and then a material output. But there's something new in the material output, and this is what we call an NPR tree. You can create multiple different NPR trees and put them on the material that you want. So if I hit X here, you'll see I just go back to a normal principled BSDF. All my other materials right now still have my NPR tree. So I'm going to go back and hit NPR reg. That's what I called mine. So if I dive into this NPR tree and I hit A to frame all, this is the whole entire setup. And today, instead of building this from absolute scratch, because it did take a little bit of figuring out, I'm just going to walk you through each setup that I have. I have organized it into sections to make it a little bit easier. I just want to explain the NPR tree setup. So let's dive into our first section. This is going to be probably the biggest beast of it all. So if I just look at what's coming out of my light setup, this is what I'm getting. So you can see we have some texture in here and we have just basically a black and white mask, but with some color. And if I duplicate this point light, bring it over here and let's change the color maybe to a blue, we're getting the light info and the color. Now, how do we get that? Well, there's something called a for each light loop. If we go to add and we go to zones, there is a for each light. And this is what we get out of it. We get a for each light and a for each light. This is our kind of input and this is our output. We can have color, we can have direction, distance, we could do a bunch of things in here, but we have to go through this for each light loop. Let's look at our main kind of texture. So I have a texture here, and this is just a seamless texture that I created. We put a texture coordinate and a mapping. That way we could scale it and we can kind of rotate it however we need. And if we look at that, this is what we get. And if we put that through a color ramp, right now it's default, but if we needed to adjust it, for any darker, if we wanted to get just a little bit more definition in between, we could do that. What we're going to do is we are going to add this to our normal. And what we're going to do is use a vector math, and that is going to add our color out of our color ramp and our normal. So we get something like this. You don't need to do this necessarily, but I put this through a mix node where I can adjust between our full normal and our added output. I just like to have that because I like to adjust it if I want the texture, if I don't want the texture, just depends on the project. Now what we're gonna do with that is we are gonna take for our for each light and this is gonna get the direction for each light. And we're doing a dot product between that. Now, if I want to look through this, you'll see that everything is black and it doesn't mean that our output is black. It's because our input is coming for the for each light. It has to go through the for each light. So for example, if I put it here and connected now, if I put this in, we'll see our output. So you could just see here the direction is basically the dot product. It's allowing us to get our texture on the edges of the shadow. And it is a little bit in our regular light. If we wanted to adjust it, we could just try to adjust our color ramp as much. So from this dot product, let's hold and let's go down. Another thing that we can look at in these NPR is these shading models. The shading models are really cool. So if we just search shading models, they'll be in NPR groups, shading models. And we can get info from a Lambert, a half Lambert, a Fong, all these different things. So what I did was I put the direction as the light vector into our Lambert, and that gives us this. This is just our normal Lambert info. And what I did was I put the attenuation and our shadow mask, I multiplied those, and then we added them all vector math together. So we get this. This is just getting a little bit sharper edges. And if we combine these with a minimum, we now have a little bit of a harder edge and some Lambert info. So now, we can move forward again over here. Now I put these through two separate color ramps. So what I did was I brought in another texture and I put that through a little mix node here with my color ramp 
color ramp and putting that through an ad. And you do get a little bit of color from it. So I just did put it through another color ramp. That way we could just make it black and white. Now I put that through a multiply, but I have one other area of texture. So if we go over here, we have our shadow mask, which this is what we get out of our shadow mask. I put those through two color ramps and I got one more texture coming through. If we look at that, here's my other texture. I added the shadow mask of one with the color and this is in add. That way we're getting the white still coming through. I wanted the texture in the shadow, not in the light. So using an add of a color node, we'll put that white over our texture. Then what I did was I just ran that through a mix node. So if we look at that, ran that through a mix node, that way we can adjust and see how much of the texture we actually want. So I currently have it at a 0.8, but whatever works for you. Now that was ran into a multiply with our previous output here. And now you see we just get a little bit of that texture. This is full down here. And then that just gives us a little bit of texture while still keeping these shadows dark. Now the last little bit of this is going to be to run that through a multiply and we are running that through the attenuation. So if we look at that, see it's a little dark. Then I have this color ramp from earlier running that through another multiply. So that way we're getting a little bit of that texture back. You see before and after just a little bit of that texture, but we don't have the color. And I ran that through a scale. And if you see here, there is a color output in the for each light that's going to go through here. And this is vector math. So we can look through that. And the reason that we don't have color yet is because in a for each light loop, before you do this next step, it only looks at a single light and it's whatever is the light that is closest. It's a little strange, but if we run it through a maximum, it's the vector math and we take this right here, this kind of black box here, that is basically going to tell our whole entire loop to look at every single light instead of just a single light. So if we run that through, now we get our color in. So this is how we get our light info. Now we can actually throw it onto our diffuse. So to start getting it onto our texture, I pulled a NPR input and I looked at the diffuse direct and put that through a maximum with our output from our light info. And you can see here, this just kind of brings in more of that light color. And down here, let's get our texture. So first off, I took a cavity node and a cavity node is just this. It's a black and white image showing the cavity of the geometry. I ran that through a color ramp just to slightly adjust it. Nothing too crazy. But what I wanted to do is give a little bit of variance to the base texture before throwing the lights on. So I ran this black and white texture through a mix node. I put that in the factor and the factor is just a diffuse color, but then also my diffuse color with an overlay of this kind of yellow. And this is the result. It's very simple. It's very subtle, but it just gives us a little something. So if I go before, after, before, after, just, just a little bit, then there is something called Ridge out of that cavity. And the Ridge is this. And again, just wanting to give a slight, just variance, a slight uh, softness to it. So I ran that through a color ramp just so we could get a true black and white image and really get dial in the uh, effect. I ran that through another mix node and I took my result from before and I ran the diffuse color through a multiply node with just this like slight kind of brown tannish color you can see here. And this is the result of that. So you can see it just brightened up the face a little bit because we were saying, oh, the neck, all this stuff, just shadow. And if I go before this is full, but I added a 0.7, we can even do a 0.5, just keep it subtle. 
it's just basically a soft light. Now, there's a few things from here. So I have this output, which is essentially my base texture now. And I have this vector output with the light info. So the first thing that I did was I ran that into a soft light node and I put the texture and this is what we get. So we start to get that texture. We start to get that color in just a little bit and then ran that through another color node, which is a color dodge node. And I did the same vector putting that through. So if I put that through, here's my output and we could dial this back. Sometimes it might be a little too bright. Even this one we can dial in. This all depends on the look that you're going for. So I have that output, but I ran it through one more mixed node and I wanted to get a little bit more in the shadow. So I ran my base texture through a multiply and I put like a darkish kind of uh, blue and you can see this is the result of just that. Now I needed a black and white image to be my factor. So I took the vector node from before with the light info. I ran that through a hue saturation and value and I put the saturation to zero. So I got a black and white image that way that could be my factor. And I put in this mix node, I put the result of the color dodge and the result of the multiply. The multiply is essentially our shadow. And if I run that through, now you see this is our output. And if I turn this down to zero, you can see the impact that it makes. Just gives us a little bit more depth and you could dial this in however dark you want, however subtle. I find something like a 0 0.5, 0 0.6 is kind of nice. Depends how dark you want the shadows. And that is getting our light onto our diffuse, onto our textures. Now from this output, we would be going to add everything together with the rim and highlight, but let's go over the rim and highlight first. So this is the output of our rim light. This is just basically an alpha based rim light. This is stuff that I was doing and how I kind of explained on my Marvel Rivals short, but I was doing that in the compositor and to have it built in to the NPR tree so I don't have to be going through compositing is phenomenal. So let's take a look at this. Now there's a top section here. I'm going to ignore that for the time being and I'll show you at the end. So I have my NPR input and I also have a for each light loop. So the NPR input, I'm taking our position and I'm putting that into an image sample. An image sample is one of these cool new nodes in the NPR tree. And it basically allows us to offset the image. So if I look at that by itself, here's our position, but say I put the diffuse color, you could see now I put into the offset a combined XYZ. The combined XYZ is just an XYZ node. And if I move this, you see it actually is moving the whole entire image of this, which is just pretty cool. Now we don't want to go that far. We want to keep it subtle and we don't want the diffuse color. We want the position. So let's put that back into our image and here's our image. We're going to put this into a vector transform, put that into a separate X, Y, Z and only look at the Z. Now what we need to do, this output of our separate X, Y, Z is being offset right now, but we need to subtract it with the normal. So I put a position into an, just another vector transform and another separate X, Y, Z with the Z. And this is our image, which is pretty cool, but I don't want all of this info inside. I just want the outer edge. I don't want all that. So I put a greater than value and now we get that image. Now I'm going to be honest here. I think the for each light loop is an artifact from an older uh, version where the light itself was actually controlling the rim light. I'm not doing that anymore, but I also know it works. So I'll just say make a for each light loop put the black box here and we're just going to add the output of this with a vector math and put it into the for each light loop and voila, here we go. It's the same output. I think that was just a remnant from an earlier version. I mentioned there was an area above, so this is a solid line, but I did play around with, can we get some texture in there? And I brought in just an image, seamless texture, uh, texture coordinate UV, mapping vector and scaled it up to whatever. 
I put that through a color ramp and we can look at that. Here we are. And I ran that through a vector math multiply and I'm multiplying the combined X, Y, Z. And if we feed this into our offset, now we actually get some texture on our edge here, which is pretty cool. So if you want the texture in the edge, that's something that you could totally add in. Or you could just take that combine XYZ, put it through the offset, and it's solid. So have a play with it, see what works for you. Now there's one other thing before we add it all together, and this was just, I wanted to add a little subtle highlight. So I have my texture here, uh, mapping, texture coordinate node, you know, your simple kind of setup. I ran that through the color ramp. It's going through the multiply with the combine XYZ, and it's going through an image sample. So if we take a look at that, here it is. The highlight isn't meant to be an actual specularity that's going to be all over. It was just meant to be another layer of a kind of outer rim light kind of thing, but not in your face solid white, just something subtle. So it's the same setup as a rim light, but we just offset it a little bit differently. This time we're using the texture and it's going through the whole thing and this is our output. So we have our normal rim light black and white image and we have our subtle highlight black and white image. And now we can combine everything all together. So to start, let's take a look at our subtle highlight. We have our output from here with our colored light, which already looks pretty cool. And the black and white image of our subtle highlight is gonna feed into the factor of a mix node. I have the normal output with the lights from our texture, but I also ran that through a soft light with a kind of very subtle light blue. And you can see here is the color output of that. And if we look at that with the factor, you could see on the outer edge here, we just have this subtly and we could dial this back. This is full on 100%. Or we could just dial this in and it just gives us a little bit of texture. Now we need to do the same for our rim light. And the rim light is going to go into the factor of another mix node and the A will be the output from our soft highlight. And I ran that through a color dodge node and here's our color dodge output and if we look through the mix node now we have everything here and we could change this to a color if we wanted to if we want to just keep it that kind of subtle white kind of rim light we can do that and you don't actually need to run it through a color dodge I did that, that way I can adjust the color if I wanted to or adjust how much of it I really wanted, but you could totally just do a solid color and that would be fine. And that's my whole entire NPR stylized setup. Um, you can see it does seem very daunting, but it's a lot of mixed nodes. It's a lot of black and white masks, similar to how I went about compositing with my Marvel Rivals stuff. This time it's in an NPR tree. And what I like about that is that when I render, it is the render. It's not doing another process on top. So it is a little bit faster. But what I like about this is that I can just light this as I normally kind of would and still get that color coming through. And you can see it in action here. This is a shot that I created just as a test using this whole entire setup to get that stylized look. But thank you so much. If you're interested in more videos on learning animation and cool stylized techniques, check out these videos here. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.